Good evening. Good evening, everyone. We are Team Creative Strategies, and we are here to present you with the Chop and Swap. My name is Jen Scarborough. I'm Kate O'Loughlin. I'm Bronx Bernstein. I'm Rachel Rubin. Here's a quick outline of what we're going to go over tonight. Uh, we're going to uh, demo our product. We're going to talk a little bit about marketing. Uh, go over some financials. We're going to conclude, and we're going to ask you guys to keep all of your questions until the after we've concluded and our presentation's over. We are employed by IPD Inc., who has been hired by Hampton Direct to present new product ideas. We assume use of Hampton Direct's manufacturing and distribution resources and will provide additional assumptions as needed. To demonstrate the need of a product, we created a short infomercial in an as seen in three manner. So please go ahead and take a look. Does this look familiar to you? You're overwhelmed by the number of cutting boards you have? <laughs> Scraps of many everywhere would bring them to the garbage. What a mess! <laughs> After cutting juicy foods like fruit, vegetables, and meat, liquid is spilling everywhere, even on yourself. Open the same board, gross. Open containers in the fridge, even grosser. Collecting your food shoes is impossible. What a waste! And then doing all the dishes. But stop! It doesn't have to be that way. We would like to introduce to you the Chop and Swap! <laughs> and here it is, the Chop and Swap. The Chop and Swap is a multifunctional cutting board, cutting center, I should probably say, with the overall dimensions of 25 by 15 by 2 inches, which still can be adjusted as we move on further with our product. Um, our basic package is going to include a base, two cutting boards, two cups, two lids for the cups, two, two lids for the cutting board, and also two rubber handles, as well as um, a juice collector and a grating. If we now talk about the functionality of a cutting board, uh, the chop and swap comes with two separate, reversible, and fully removable cutting boards that, are, can, that can be snapped into the base with the help of little dimples. And it can also be used as a serving tray, as you can see here. Thank you very much. <laughs> we also use different colors for the cutting board. Green for fruit and vegetables, blue for seafood and meat. And that was done because of hygienic reasons. So um, you don't have to place your tomato in raw chicken juice because you know some of them can hide everywhere. The cutting boards also have module cavities which allow you to place um, uh, a grater, for example, or a measuring cup onto your cutting board. Within the package are also lids for the cups. So if you're, you cut your food and you have extra food, simply place a lid over your cup and store it in the fridge. And to then create a flat surface again, the board lids can be placed into those holes and the cutting can continue. On the outside of our cutting board is a little feet that allow to fold out and angle the cutting board to an angle of five degrees with after intensive testing proved to be the angle when uh, most of the liquids start running. The food juice is collected in the outside grooves, as you can see here, and so the juice is going to be collected in our collection cup on the bottom of our cutting board. And please also note that the bottom groove is not a flat groove as well, but goes downwards, so everything is collected. Finally, we have rubber, rubber handles on the outside of the cutting board for safe and comfortable transportation. If we now talk a little bit of the material and the manufacturing, the base is made of polypropylene, which is an economical um, material, it's dishwasher safe, and also um, it doesn't dull knives. And for the manufacturing, as you can see here, the bottom of the base is hollow. So first of all, we save material, it makes it lighter and also allows us to produce it in a single cavity injection mold. The cutting boards are also injection molded, um, but this time in a four cavity injection mold. They're made of polypropylene as well. And the four cavity injection mold is because they're hollow on the inside. Again, we save material and it's lighter. And it allows us to use different color combinations. So whatever trend of the summer is, we're ready. Our juice collector, the grater, and the cups are made of polycarbonate. We chose that material because it's very light, it is nearly unbreakable, and also clear, which was a very big advantage for the measuring cup. So if you store your food in the fridge, you know exactly what's in it, and 
yeah, you can see through it. And finally, we have feed lids and buttons that are also made out of polypropylene. And to show you the, the principle of our feed, you can angle the board and the juice runs downward. Um, finally, to show you, or to demonstrate better the removable parts, we created a rapid prototype, which is in a scale of one third. So please do not get confused with the different sizes. This is the original size, this is the scale down model. So as mentioned, you can easily slide out the cutting board, and depending on what food you have, you can simply choose the, the, the side of the cutting board. If you then want to use a cup, simply place it right into the middle. Please note that the lid on the cup um, makes it possible that you can cut your food while the cup is in the board. So here, simply remove the lid. Chop your food, simply swap it into the cup. If you want grated cheese, throw a grater right on top, take it out, put the lid back on, yeah. and to cup, take it out, store it in the fridge, and to close this hole again, we have those board lids, place them on, and the cutting can continue. The Chop and Swap will face direct competition from cutting board suppliers who sell to our target market and compete based on purchase price, product features, and convenience of use. Mainly the competition will come from those suppliers who sell through Hampton Direct's retail partners. Additionally, there are a ton of materials to consider. Um, cutting boards come in glass, marble, plastic, wood, or bamboo, and each material has different attributes to it which could affect the customer's decision-making process. And there are a variety of styles, prices, sizes, and product features, with the most popular features being non-slip, non-absorbent, they won't dull your knives, they have juice screws for collecting juices, and they are dishwasher safe. The demographics for our target market are going to be women ages 22 to 50 with a household income of at least $25,000. For geographics, we decided to just focus on the entire United States simply because this is Hampton Direct's model. For lifestyle, we're going to target people, people that cook at least a few meals a week. These people are going to be split into two groups, people that enjoy cooking because the chop and swap is going to make it even more enjoyable for them, and people who do not enjoy cooking because it's going to make their lives easier. For psychographics, we're going to target people that are health conscious based on some accessories that could be added on, which are going to be talked about later, and good housekeepers because it's going to keep their kitchens neat and tidy and it's going to make things so much easier. Purchasing patterns of cutting boards, there's two different groups. Uh, it's people re replace their cutting boards for two reasons. Uh, first is their cutting board fails. It breaks something of the sort. Um, or a new cutting board comes on the market, much like ours, <laughs> that is just way better. Uh, also, people who go just get out of college and go out on their own for the first time, or people that have just gotten married and bought a house for the first time, don't have these things. So those are first-time cutting board buyers. There are a few buying sensitivities for cutting boards. These include uh, if the cutting board has added features, uh, material is made out of people have their preferences for wood and plastic and so on. Also the aesthetics because this does sit on your kitchen counter, you want it to look beautiful. Uh, it's got to be easy to use and it's got to be at a price point that people can afford. We have done some consumer research, although it is minimal. We have uh, we had conducted a list of needs and from those ne the list of needs we came up with a list of ideas. We ran both of these by our family and friends, so we thank them for all their help. Uh, we did a pew chart analysis on our best ideas, and we've selected this idea as our best idea from our pew chart, and we've asked, asked family and friends once again for even additional input into this product. A few things need to be done for consumer research, though. The first is a concept test, and we're going to do this with a focus group. There's going to be four groups of 12 people. All the people in the group are going to be women, and they're going to be broken down by age and their attitude toward cooking. So we're going to have a young group of women that enjoy cooking and a young group of women that do not enjoy cooking. Same for an older demographic. We hope to gather information about their attitude toward our product as well as their willingness to buy and the price they'd be willing to pay. This is going to cost $40,000. 
Next, we need a use test. We're going to provide about 30 participants with the cutting board, ask them to use it. In a few weeks, get back to us with a survey on how they used it. We also want to find out how they misused the product. And this is going to cost $4,000, not including the cost of the 30 cutting boards that we would need to give them. So the total consumer research cost is $44,000. Unlike standard cutting boards on the market, the chop and swap allows for multiple line extensions. We can incorporate different colors, materials and features, each at relatively low cost to the consumer once they've purchased the base package. Additionally, we can take advantage right off the bat of Hampton Direct's heavy marketing. Um, right now, there's little to no marketing done on cutting boards, so we can use this to our advantage to get the name out about the chop and swap. And this will also help us create brand awareness and establish a brand identity. One of the many advantages of our design is the ability to expand in the future. We can offer cutting boards in different materials as well as various other modules. Our team has discussed the possibility of proposing a joint venture with Jack Chop for use of their dicer, which I'm sure you've seen advertised on TV. And while we decided the measuring cup and grater to be the most basic of kitchen necessities, each of these other modules would be quite useful as well. A brand extension will be any kitchen product that can't be easily incorporated into the cutting center. And some of the ideas we have come up with so far are recipe book stand, a lazy Susan, or a wood cutting board cleaning system. Following our list of financial assumptions used in our analysis, our team consulted with Hampton Direct regarding advertising costs, ideal sales, and time to market saturation. James was very responsive to our emails and we thank him for that. Um, unit sales of an existing product taken as successful were used to project sales throughout the product life cycle as well as for an average and poor product. These were then applied over a three-year market saturation period or 12 quarters. We also consulted with IPD executives regarding offshore tooling estimates, both aluminum and steel. A four to one factory to retailer price markup is used to determine sales price and a 35% tax bracket is applied based on projected revenues. This table breaks down calculations by product success. We have successful average and poor. We see increasing price per unit because as less are sold, expenses for each are greater. Units to break even, which are low enough to occur within the second quarter of production. Profit per unit, total unit sales, and net income. High net incomes and low break even units occur for two reasons. One, our results lack Hampton Direct company expenses, such as salaries, rent, patents, inventory, etc. And two, because projected sales are inherently optimistic, the consumer research proposed earlier will help verify these projections and increase the accuracy of our financial statements. Um, regardless, with such high net incomes, a three to one price markup might be more appropriate. Who knows what is given up in revenue might even come back more so in product demand. Clearly, the chop and swap is a product with immense financial potential. Startup costs are far exceeded by projected sales revenues, allowing an early break-even point, as well as our full confidence that once further consumer research is conducted and Hampton Direct company expenses factored in with our own, that extensive profits will still be realized with a product that is inexpensive to produce and high in demand. Please keep these points in mind as you evaluate our upcoming financial requests. The total funding that we are requesting for the chop and, chop, chop and swap is $1,945,500. And this is broken down as follows. Immediately we're going to need the $40,000 for the concept test and the $4,000 for the use test. Upon decision to manufacture, we're going to ask for $180,000 for startup costs, $1,721,500 to cover variable costs of production. And I know that's a big scary number, but you have to remember that you are going to get four times that back in revenue. Uh, and our net income is displayed here for an average, uh, for the average demand over three years. And again, this number needs to be adjusted like Rachel has already touched on. So I'm going to leave you with one final thought. When you pick the chop and swap, chop and swap, uh, you are not only going to get a product that is multifunctional and meets the needs of consumers, you're also going to get a product that you can build an entire brand around and will be profitable for years to come. Thank you.